Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting quadratic equation. I guess we could call this a homemade quadratic because I kind of thought about this idea, but anyone can think about this. Once you get the idea, it's very easy to come up with uh, or make up problems like this, I should say. So I'll be presenting two methods, even, the even though the first method might be inconclusive because it depends on how much pain it's going to inflict upon us. I haven't tried this before, uh, first time, so that's going to be fun too. And a lot of times people are going to say something like, oh, you should have a script and you shouldn't make mistakes or you shouldn't spend time on this and so on and so forth. But I like to make keep it more natural and just go with the flow, you know. And if I make mistakes, you know them, I don't cut them most of the time. If it's, they're really bad and kind of interferes, then I try to cut those parts. Other than that, you probably noticed I even make mistakes and I don't even notice them. Anyways, so... First method is no pain, no gain. We're going to use the quadratic formula. But before that, let's go ahead and put um, everything on the same side. And we're going to do it with the second method too. Now, one thing you can do is you can kind of get rid of the negative by negating one of these terms. And this is a good candidate. So I can do this. And just write this as plus A minus C times b plus c and that is equal to zero okay so we subtracted it and then we negated c minus a so that it became a minus c make sense okay good now we're gonna use the quadratic formula bear with me let's see how painful this can be but it's fun uh, a lot of variables i have three variables but if you want to call these like d and e whatever k and m you can do that and then at the end you can plug it in because it's going to be a lot of um, writing the same thing anyways negative b is this one plus minus the square root of b squared so b squared is going to be the same as a plus b squared and then minus four times a c4 uh, a is one so four times this hmm, that's not super bad times that and then all of that is divided by two now let's go ahead and focus on what's under the radical, which is the discriminant. Let's go ahead and write it separately, because what we can do is we can actually simplify this as much as, much as possible and then plug it in instead of writing it every time, because that's going to be real painful, unnecessarily. So let's see what we can do with this, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and expand this and then expand the next thing, uh, which is going to be, so think about it, uh, that's going to be minus 4ab, and then minus 4ac, right, there's a minus uh, 4 in front of everything, and then plus 4bc, and then plus 4c squared, okay, cool, this is our discriminant, or delta, and now let's see if we have any like terms, okay, so these two are like terms, we can go ahead and combine them. So a squared minus 2ab, and then plus b squared, and then minus 4ac, plus 4bc, plus 4c squared. Now, if you want good solutions, then you want the discriminant to be a perfect square. So our goal is to be able to write this as something squared, a polynomial expression in abc. Can we do that? That's the biggest question here that's the million dollar question so in order to be able to see if we can do it I want to kind of factor this and notice that with the introduction of negative 4ab into the equation we got a perfect square here I can see that this is a perfect square and that is perfect this is a perfect square and I'm hoping that these two terms is going to give me what I need in the middle so let's go ahead and write this as a minus b squared and then these two guys, I can write it as negative 4c times a minus b, which looks good to me, plus 4c squared. Now, you may or may not see what this means, but if you don't see right away, let's go ahead and do something which is called substitution. And I can go ahead and call this difference d, and d is, I think, appropriate. And we get the following, d squared minus 4dc, I'm going to write the d first plus 4c squared. I hope you see what I see. This is d minus 2c quantity squared. Awesome. Isn't that great? That's what we wanted. We want delta to be 
a perfect square, and that's actually perfect. Now, let's back substitute. What is D? D is A minus B, so delta or the discriminant becomes A minus B minus 2C or not 2C squared. Awesome. Now we are ready to plug it into the quadratic equation. I mean the solution of the quadratic. Here, the quadratic formula I mean. So let's go ahead and plug it in. We have X equals the opposite of A plus B plus minus the square root of delta. But delta is squared, so if you just square root it, the square is going to go away and we're going to end up with this. And isn't that beautiful? we got a complicated looking expression, but trust me, it's much, much better than this one. Don't you think? Okay. Boo. That's bad. Well, it's not bad actually. It gave us the solution. Anyways. So now we can go ahead and do the following. X equals, now we can expand. And then let's use the plus sign first. Divide by 2. This is going to give me A cancels out. Negative 2B, negative 2C. So it's going to be negative B minus C. That's one of the solutions. And then by minus sign, negative A minus B minus A plus B plus 2C. Divide by 2. Anything cancels out? Yes, B. 2C minus 2A. So that's going to be C minus A. So those are the solutions, and we're done with the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick and see if it's actually an improvement because the first method was kind of painful. It wasn't super bad. I wasn't expecting uh, something nice like this. But anyways, I just discovered with you guys. And now let's rewrite the problem. And I'm going to pick it up from where I subtracted the term so that everything is on the same side, and I already negated it. So I'm going to start from here, okay? Just a couple steps. So instead of using the quadratic formula, because the quadratic formula gave us something nice, this equation must be factorable. Don't you think? It is factorable indeed. And to factor it, we're going to do the following. We're going to call this m and we're going to call this n. And what is this going to be? Good question. Notice that if I add m plus n, I get a minus c plus b plus c. C cancels out and I end up with A plus B. And yes, this is M plus N. In other words, when you're trying to factor a trinomial, which is monic, uh, the coefficient of X squared is 1, then you're looking for two numbers whose product is the constant term and whose sum is, is the coefficient of X. And in this case, we did find those numbers. Those are M and N. And so basically, this equation, and you could also talk about Vieta's formulas, two numbers whose product is mn and whose sum is m plus n, those numbers are m and n. So we can factor this as x plus m times x plus n equals 0. Now, if you don't see this, if you don't see this, then you can go ahead and write the expression as x squared plus mx plus nx plus mn, and then you can factor by grouping, and then you'll get the same answer. Make sense? Okay, you can try that too if you don't, you don't see this right away. Cool. Now, what is M and N? Let's go ahead and back substitute X plus A plus B. Oh, one thing you could do before uh, you replace M and N with something. From here, we get X equals negative M and X equals negative N as solutions. Now, let's do the substitution. M is A plus B, so we're going to get opposite of A plus B as a solution. And the opposite of N is B plus C. Actually, M is not, I'm sorry, M is A minus C. I should fix that, A minus C. So it's going to be C minus A, and negative N is just going to be negative B minus C. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.